What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. As always, I'm your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, and the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, Stuart Turley. My man, how are we doing today? Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, well, thank you. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And uh, glad you reminded me so I can uh, go by Walmart and get some flowers for my wife. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you might want to get on that because knowing you, you're probably a little behind on that. I'm always behind, baby. You're welcome. But luckily, you stay out ahead of every single story and as <laughs> always have put together a great lineup for us. Um, we'd be remiss if we didn't start. Stu, I owe you a dollar. You had the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Um, I did not. Um, and so um, I'll find a dollar and I'll mail it to you. I'll postmark it uh, last month, though, so it, uh, you can write it off on your 2022 taxes. Um, you do have a great show for us lined up today. Um, here, here, here's an overview of the articles that we'll cover. First off, Biden's energy secretary exposed in gas stove plan. Quote, she met privately with green company with major ties to Chinese. We, 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 wouldn't be able, we wouldn't start off the show if we didn't go down the conspiracy route. So Stu's got a great one lined up. Up for us there. Next article will cover catastrophic failures. 300 ton wind turbine keeps on collapsing in terrifying fashion. Um, that sounds spooky. Next, we've got California utility regulators told lack of storage caused natural gas price spike. Um, a duh. So that's the understatement of the century. Um, next, we'll cover Saudi Aramco CEO warns ESG investing poses threat to global energy security. So the exact person we want commenting on ESG the Saudi Aramco CEO. So Stu will tell us what that is all about. And then finally, we cover U.S. to pour $30 million into lowering cost of large wind turbines. You heard that right. We're spending $30 million to lower the cost of large wind turbines. Stu will cover all those things. He'll kick it over to me. We'll talk quickly about what happened in the oil and gas and natural gas markets today. We had a little down to me. Natural gas is just killing us right now. It's all the way down to 240. Um, crude oil uh, briefly was above 80, now currently trading actually the night before here on the 13th at about 79.26. And then um, a little bit of uh, some interesting news out of, an, uh, out of EQT. I will cover all that in a bag of chips, guys. But first, Check us out on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. The best place for all your oil and gas news. All the articles that we're about to cover come from that website. It's the it's Stu's love child. It's our love child, mine and Stu's together. Um, we kiss it every night, and we make sure it has the stories that it needs to keep you guys understanding about what's going on in the energy business energynewsbeat.com dashboard.energynewsbeat.com a one-stop shop for all oil and gas news please check us out there with that Stu, enough of the pleasantries where do you want to begin i'm going to correct you here for the second time since i've known you in three or four years um it's energy it's not just oil i feel okay fine uh, yeah, energy news beat clearly because that's the name of the website where do you want to begin okay you owe me two dollars let's start <laughs> <laughs> Let's start. U.S. to pour thirty million into lowering costs for large wind turbines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there. This this is the U.S. Department of Energy (DOE) announced thirty million funding opportunity to advance the cost effectiveness of domestic manufacturing materials, including lightweight composites that would allow wind turbines to produce more efficiently. Well, there's a lot in this article and there's a lot that David Blackman, I got to give a, a shout out to David Blackman. The estimated performance period would be two to three years. Interested parties have until March 23rd to submit their concept papers. Um, We're making Mark a concept paper. We are thousand percent sending it a concept paper oh absolutely but it's already the uh inside scoop is that it's already been awarded to siemens uh from europe because they 
lost a billion dollars and they were not going to be writing any gear to the United States in their renewable division. So in order to rob the U.S. taxpayer, I mean, to use the U.S. taxpayer dollars to continue the offshore uh, wind, they had to have gear. And so in order to do that, they had to bribe, I mean, incentivize Siemens uh, to come over. And so the price tag is $30 million to get Siemens to put in a plant over here so that you and I could pay taxes so that it goes into the uh, financial pockets of the politicians, I mean, into Siemens. So this article was really pretty good. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a pretty good business model Siemens got. I'd like to get in on that little scheme. Oh, absolutely. And, and but it are. is kind of funny. You lose a billion, all you get is 30 million back. So, I mean, who did get the raw that, deal? Think No, think about it. That's going to do nothing but then pay for certain things. And they're printing money, so they're also going to be getting tapping into the other bazillions of dollars. So it's it's that is a sacrificial appeasement. All right. Well, here's what we'll say. We, huh? we, our whole marketing campaign for our white paper that we're going to concept paper that we're going to send in for this right. will be stated around if we don't win, it's racist. So then they'll have to give it to us. Uh, I'd like to stay on the air, um, but I would have one comment, and neither one of us are in the good graces of that comment. So um, I'm Indian. I identify hey. as an Indian. Hey, so, do you? Huh? You you classified as American Indian now? No, yeah. I, nice. I got Indian. I got Indian. Pocahontas was my great 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 grandmother. Okay. John Smith. You got John Smith in your bloodline. What do you got next before we get ourselves in trouble? Um, okay. I actually had paperwork to prove it. I got a pedigree. Okay. Got paper. Uh, Saudi Aramco e uh uh, CEO warns ESG investing poses threat to global energy security. Let's get you a good uh, Amir Nasir. He's a good dude. Uh, I really like him. Uh, he said Saudi Aramco said mounting pressure to curb new investment in oil and gas was quote flawed on based on flawed assumptions unquote. Here's the rest of it. Proponents of popular energy transition narrative paint a picture of a utopian world where alternatives are ready to replace oil and gas almost overnight, uh, he told the Saudi Capital Market Forum in Riyadh. If ESG policies are implemented in with an automatic bias against any and all conventional energy projects, the resulting underinvestments will have serious implications for the global economy, for energy affordability and energy security. Man, he hit it right. Uh, he is one sharp cat. You know, I've always thought very highly of Saudi Aramco, Saudi Arabia, uh, mm -hmm. for how they're handling Saudi Arabia first. Absolutely. And uh, they have been doing a great job with that. This is what is showing as the ESG movement is really taking a black eye and it's taken a beating like um, uh, being rented, uh, being beat like a rented mule and ESG. Or folks, some of the women that live in Saudi Arabia. I don't know. One of the two. Okay. You said that. <laughs> I Very funny though. Are you saying they look like mules? No, I didn't say. No, that. it's not what I'm saying. Okay, that's right. That's not good. Okay, so then um, if you take a look at this, Saudi Arabia, um, OPEC leader, who is the uh, print, a Saudi prince, uh, basically said even stronger words on that yesterday. So, when, when are we doing a show live from Riyadh? When are oh, we, we doing a show live from Riyadh? I'm down. Oh, here he is right now. He's calling. Let me. You, uh, you got MBS on the line? I, I do. I'm, yeah. Hey, baby, what's up? No. I... <laughs> hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> oh yeah. You. Most people have sports people on the on the, their posters, like picture of Michael Jordan, picture of Michael Phelps. Stu has MBS. Stu oh, has yeah. the Saudi Crown Prince family. 
Um, but you know what? Um, I've always been been uh, like cheering them on here. Let me. Uh, I got to announce this. Alex Stein is the uh, Alex Stein uh, host of Prime Time with Alex Stein and Blaze TV. He's a comedian coming on the podcast next next month it's your so, greatest accomplishment you have a comedian coming yeah. on your podcast hey uh we're gonna have a uh do du a duel comedian duel all right let's go to the next <laughs> yeah one. i'm taking him i'm <laughs> taking him i'm putting it all on alex bet the oh, house baby what's next okay biden energy secretary exposed in gas stove plant remember all those gas stoves that they're trying to ban she met privately with green company with major ties to the chinese Ooh, dun 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 let's go through a couple of things in here okay um michael what do you get if uh granholm married fetterman oh yikes Stu Turley? Ooh, smack. A better I don't know. That's that's somebody, somebody, you know, a barely functioning person who may or may not know a little bit about what goes on in the energy business. Well, that's just Graham Hold by herself. So, you know, you got to come up with something better than that. I don't know. I, had to, I don't, had to. Uh, His first name or her, uh, her other name would be Fetter Graham. <laughs> Pentagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, let me get to the quote here. Um, this is really pretty, pretty frightening. Um, Biden keeps selling our oil to China. Uh, and this is the part that really gets me all worked up. Secretary of Energy Granholm Fetterman, I think she's dating him met privately with the leader of the Rocky Mountain Institute, RMI, the group that funded a recent study used to clarify calls for a uh, ban, uh, gas stove ban. This is the part where it really kind of got me up. The uh, Rocky Mountain, where's the paragraph? Rocky Mountain uh, Institute has collaborated with the Chinese government to study transitioning away from traditional fossil fuels, and the group's only office outside of the U.S. is located in Beijing. Right. Ooh, that's. Now, try, I mean. Try, uh, that, that, try, <laughs> yep. Now try this one on. Uh, in this case, the head of the Rocky Mountain Institute or RMI worked for the WEF. The World Economic Forum. That's where it's met, run by that knucklehead uh, Schwab. And Klaus Schwab. To, huh? Our friend. No, he's not a friend nice of the guy. show. Friend of the show. You were kicking it on stage with him at COP27. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I was. And I called him an idiot. And they asked me to go out. That's kind of like when I met uh, Bill Gates. And, not the Bill uh, Gates when, story. Not the oh, Bill Gates. No, I'm just saying. I, I, I when I meet world leaders, uh, I make them mad. And uh, he about had a cow, and the horn got stuck. So let's go over here. This is amazing, Michael. When you sit back and take a look, um, Granholm is clearly working with the Chinese. Why? I'm going to shout out. Oh, to there's this middleman. She, it's this middleman, Jules Kortenharst. He seems like a seems like a shady character. Seems well, like a, he, a shady character. If anybody's going to say this is a conspiracy theory, it's not. And here's why: uh, RT and David Blackman both said, "I trust both of them. I don't trust me." It's random dudes on Substack. It's so oh yeah, that's a random dude on Substack. But. Um, I love that one, by the way. <laughs> that was a great one last week. Oh, dude, you can't quote this article. It's some random dude on Substack. Um, okay. Both of them. He's a Pulitzer agreed. Prize winning author. It just it kills me. Just some random dude on Substack. Okay. Um, both RT and David Blackman, they also said, and taking a look at this, um, what would China benefit if we got rid of natural gas? We would have well, to. Let me hang on. Go ahead. They say, and I agree because they're smarter than me. The, of course, I look better, but 
if you sit back, <laughs> that's horrible. And so if you take a look, China would be better off uh, to hold us to renewables. Who owns all 80, 90 percent of the uh, rare earth minerals, critical minerals? Who owns the manufacturing capabilities for renewables? China. What happens if they get rid of the stoves? Well, the stoves, if they are electric, can be remotely turned on and turned off. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think it's uh, pathetic that they're that stupid. Okay, let's go to the next one. And this is really rolling around into this one. There is a major thing going on around, and I don't know why. I'm not sleeping under any uh, wind mm -hmm. turbines. Um, catastrophic failures, 300 ton wind turbines keep collapsing in terrifying fashion. And for our podcast listeners, there's a picture of a wind turbine that has like folded over on itself. Looks like a wilted daisy on fire. It looks lovely. Oh, it is. Uh, I can smell it from here. Uh, wind industry spin doctors are struggling to explain why a troubling uptick in catastrophic and terrifying wind turbine collapses. Gravity is not kind to these 300 ton monsters. Um, hundreds of them have been collapsing around the world and the rate of collapses seems to be in increasing. Um, Michael, uh, this thing is amazing. Uh, I am now, again, I am finding in all the research I'm trying to get nailed together, I had a great interview with Valerie Pinamonte. She is a safety attorney, and she has been on over 50 major wind projects. Death happens to be one of the side effects to workers. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's going to be a great podcast coming out here real quick but it's less than eight years is the meantime between failure when these things become no longer physical or uh, fiscally uh capable so here's one that was uh higher than the statue of liberty it fell oh much pretty much right on top of itself these things are not meant to take that much G-force. It is the vibrations that take these things down. So it's the same vibrations that are taking the whales down. So. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I your whale post on LinkedIn, speaking of that, is going off, by the way. So oh, uh, it's, it's going absolutely bonkers on our website. I mean, considering that's what. That's what some of these energy policies are going to drive us back to to whale energy. But um, no, I mean, it, again, you're going to have you have accidents in oil and gas. You're going to spill a tank, you know, Exxon Valdez. You're going to have horrible incidences in which you're going to have mass scale failures among wind farms. It's going to happen. It happens in oil and gas. Happens in you know. Right. So let me, business, it's going to happen in the wind farm business. So if let you're me, not couching let, that into this equation, you're an idiot. Uh, and thank you. I, I, I resemble that. Now, when you said talking my, to you, I was talking to the proverbial person uh, who thinks there's going to be no damages of wind farms. Oh no, there's, I, I, I resemble being an idiot anyway. So I kind of like it. No, thank you very much. Uh, now here's the thing. The Exxon Valdez was crashed because the captain was drunk. So yes, I'm just saying things are going to happen. Yes, they you, are. I'm just, there are going to be accidents. Maybe, maybe the biggest wind, maybe the biggest wind turbine, what will happen is uh, a, a guy will be driving one out to location. He'll be drunk. It rolls off the trunk and rolls into an electrical station. We have a mass electrical out. You mean like, I mean, it's a dumb example, but like that's still a fit. It's still a, 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 you know, seven degrees away from Kevin Bacon incident that you can say you, that you have to take into account and nobody thinks about when they say, oh, well, it's just going to be, no issues with wind. There will be, and there'll be things that you can't even think about. So I think, again, if you're not couching your analysis with, yeah, we're probably going to have some failure among these, right. like you're an idiot. So um, what's oh. next before I, I jump off a cliff? Okay. One last thing about Valerie. She said, anybody that thinks that the uh, windmills are not made with a lot of oil, 
are crazy. Those things go through a ton of oil because there's like 80 gallons in one part of it. If you also don't, if you also can't put that mental picture together in your mind that these wind turbines are being, you know, made in coal factory, you know, coal powered, natural gas powered factories. Like, let's go. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you don't have the cognitive dissonance to figure this stuff out. You're barely employable. Right. And uh, you identify as a frog. Okay. So as you you come back in, um, the last article, Michael, that was pretty funny. Um, uh, California utility regulators told a lack of storage caused spike in natural gas. Okay. Governor Newsom. I love me some Governor Newsom. He's got some good looking hair and that's where his whole brain uh, power stops. Um, average bills for PG&E restaurants in Northern California shot up an estimated 195 in January compared to 151 the year before. Um, and now you come in here and he says, why are gas prices so high? California pipes in. Are you ready for this? 90% of the natural gas it uses from everywhere else, uh, making the state vulnerable vulnerable boy i had one too many root beers um according to the u.s uh, information on monday governor newsom said make it clear he wasn't satisfied we have the whole story um we want to know what factors uh in order and he comes in down further and says there's not enough natural gas storage <laughs> I mean, of course, they don't have enough storage in California. I could have told you that six months ago. Right? I, mean, I could have told you it a year ago. And people have been screaming that there's not enough storage in California. There's a reason why they're importing. But, you know, like most people, we don't listen. So no. uh, we end up in this unfortunate scenario. But honestly, I hope California oil energy prices go through the roof. I think it would be hilarious if they just crumble under the weight of $97,000 per MCF gas. It would just crack me up. Well, I... I don't wish it w- uh, on the nice people of California, but the horrible, but the bad ones, yeah, the bad ones, <laughs> you know, knock yourself out. Um, I only like only partially people. kidding. No, I'm not. We have three. What's people. next? I'm done. Uh, we only have three listeners in California. Yeah, well, um, if, if if we did, if we did, they've signed off. So, um, uh, no. yeah, on the uh, finance have, side, guys, not much to cover Africa, here. Uh, we, we got a lot of listeners in Africa, dude. Hey, I, I'll write off California. Yeah, we'll write it off in our 2022 taxes. Um, <laughs> you can get over to the markets here. Uh, NASDAQ jumped 1.6 percentage points. Uh, S&P also had a green day, 1.15 uh, percentage points. Again, we're really coming down to, um, you know, Fed Chair Jerome Powell's coming out and saying, hey, maybe things are getting a little bit better. Maybe we'll consider uh, tapping out rate increases around that 5.25 basis point mark. Um, and I think the street is reacting very strongly uh, to those comments. Cash uh, cash uh, in terms of U.S. dollar strength up a little bit today. Um, crude oil prices, we saw briefly 80, about 80.50, 80.55 was the top today. Currently trading as we record this about 7.21. Um, uh, the night before, um, 79.34. Um, I think there's a little bit of the fear of Russian supply cuts um, when, you, when you take a sniff out there on the sentiment market um, with this um, – with the fact that that um, this Russian oil price cap, we know that they're fi- the Russia um, news leak today about a 500,000 barrel cut per day um, in terms of just what they're able to export, considering they've they've kind of lost uh, most of their buyers um, outside of obviously we know China's buying a lot. We know India's buying a lot. We know there are other countries buying a lot, but they don't necessarily have access to that, quote unquote, full global market. And so I think that's that's booing prices up. I mean, again, on on, on an overall day, we're we're just just barely above what we opened, but um, it's still good to see some of that bullish sentiment. It was nice to see eighty dollars today on the natural gas side. I mean, even with the first load leaving Freeport, um, we still see prices tumble two dollars and forty four cents. I mean, it really again goes to show how little Freeport's going to matter when it comes to the oversupply that we're in. I mean, I was I was three months ago pounding the table that you know we're at. Six dollar gas. What happens with Freeport? Well, it's it, market was not as nearly as tight as we thought, and a lot of this flush natural gas production that's getting turned on continues to weigh down prices. So, um, 
it's going to be interesting to see. I, I don't necessarily see if I see a clear a clear way for the bull side um, on natural gas. I know uh, I was debating somebody in the office over the last couple of days. He's he is ready to go, but he's buying call options on natural gas like it's, it's his job. And it might turn into it if these things pop because he'll have he'll be pretty flush because he's buying it at a pretty, you know, if there's ever an entrance point, it may be now. But um, I'm not convinced if it is. Um, but again, we don't give investment advice here. We don't, um, but 150 is the strike price. <laughs> we don't give um, The only other thing I found interesting is um, um, our friends over at EQT. They today announced that David Kayan, executive vice president and chief financial officer, um, will be um, retiring um, July 2023. And I thought this was interesting. They will be conducting a national search to identify the successor. And uh, Mr. Kanye will work closely with the bird to ensure a smooth transition. So that's interesting. Most of these companies, you know, we just read today that um, uh, ExxonMobil, uh, excuse me, Chevron is considering waiving mandatory CEO retirement at 65 because there's no clear internal successor or CEO hmm. and his with, with 20, I think it's 2025. They mentioned uh, would be his replacement. They're thinking of letting him go farther. There's no point to not have, he likes the job, blah, blah, right. blah. You know, not to say that the CEO of Chevron and the CFO of EQT are on the same level, but it is interesting when a big, big market cap company right. goes outside its walls to recruit something versus, you know, groom is a successor within. So I think it's going to be very interesting what happens here. And I think we'll be following this hire very closely. Um, I'm nominating you, Stu. I think you should get the job. Um, and if who's ever the recruiting company handling it, get Stu on your list. Uh, they ain't got the money to buy me. Ooh, that's a threat. So now you got to come big. So now, now it's now it's you just have to come in large. I'm talking levered large. Yeah, they ain't got the money. We'll see. Only one way is to find out is to bid. Oh, um, yeah. you got anything else today, Stu? This was a fun show. I appreciate you. Yeah, um, no problem. Um, we appreciate everybody who's tuning in and listening. Um, you know, uh, poor Eagles, but I do. I will get you that dollar <laughs> stew. Um, <laughs> with that, guys, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. Um, finish up your day again. Uh, for Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We will see you guys tomorrow.